Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for some more Factorio Space Exploration. And since the last episode, I've been I've been quite busy. I've been up to a few things. And the one I'm going to touch on in this episode is um, material science um, research and development and so on. So, not all that long ago, I built up to Material Science 3 here. And you can see this is nicely backed up all the way along here. So this is clearly running faster than it needs, as fast as it needs to. All of that is happy and hunky-dory and so on. So we're, we're happy with that. So I thought the next one to work on would be Material Science 4. Because I've now done all of the Tier 3 sciences. We've got over here, we've got Astro Science 3 being done. We've got Energy Science 3 up here somewhere. That's being made steadily as well. Um, down here, as, as you just saw, we've got um, Material Science 3. That's this one across. No, it's not. It's this one across here. And then over here, we've got Biological 3. So we've got all of those to that sort of level. Um, and so the next one is then the next thing then is to start working on um, the Tier 4 sciences. So I pre prevaricated a little bit about this by um, doing some of the other stuff, going off and setting up core mining and that sort of thing. But I decided it's time to come back and actually do some science because that's that's how you that's how you play Factorio. You when you when you're not sure what to do next, you look at the next science pack and and, uh, and get that and get that working. So, as you can see from the diagram here, um, Material Science 4 isn't actually that complicated. Yes, there's quite a lot of things on here, but a lot of it is just sort of putting down the relevant machine and then plugging in the relevant inputs, and it's all fairly straightforward. The only bit that makes it a bit more complicated is the fact that there's a lot of different inputs, especially if you look at this one down here. The um, swirly thing um, al it's the alloy science I think it's called something like that uh, let me just check it's down here somewhere somewhere down here <laughs> we've got um, yes this one experimental alloy data yes that one and that requires lots and lots of different inputs and it, re so it requires basically all of the different metals um, I think pretty much got so we've got iron copper beryllium holmium and iridium all being fed into that and so, in order to get this working, I did need to put in some extra drop-off station, an extra drop-off station um, up here somewhere. Yes, this one here. And as you can see, this has got lots and lots of different metals and, and plastics and things, and just everything being fed into it because we needed so many different types of inputs for this. Now, some of them were um, rep uh, were repeats of things we already already had, like um, steel and and um, stone and. Uh, iridium and so on. They, they, these were all already being shipped in further up for earlier science packs. But there was quite a lot of stuff, extra stuff that needed to be brought in. So let's get started on this. What have we got here? So at the top we started off with the um, the laser shielding data and I started off with this one because it looked basically because it looked simple. It was just put down a laser facility, feed in some iridium and data cards and the material science packs and coolant as well admittedly. So there's quite a lot of stuff you needed to f f pass into, into it to make it work. But then it just passes out um, very, all, all of the outputs it feels like. So we've got the data cards coming out here. We've got some of the iridium is returned as well as you'll see. I think it's a 50% chance of returning the iridium. Uh, yes, 50% chance. So sometimes some iridium will come out. <clears throat> and that's why I've got this belt here feeding it back up and back into the supply up here. This one also produces iridium sometimes on the output, but this is only 20% of the time. So between the two of them, given that the plates, the, given the science is used at the same rate and each of them produces one card each time it runs, we've got a for every every two every time both of these run, there's a 70% chance of an iridium card coming, uh, iridium plate coming back out again. And so I reckoned that just this one, which takes in one iridium plate every time it runs, would be sufficient to, to use them all up. Which is why I've not bothered splitting the the, um, the belt to come back down here as, again as well. I'm just feeding them all up to here. And as you can see, by the way, it's happily running away, running along merrily up here. That is clearly working. The iridium is going up here. It's being prioritised by this splitter, and so we're using that one first. We're also producing a load of the um, contaminated scrap as well, but I've got a, I've got a belt over here that just takes it away. That's really easy to deal with now. Um, and this is where carrying on doing the same sort of infrastructure in more or less the same place really comes into its own, because I've got all of the all of the infrastructure for dealing with all of that rubbish that's being produced up here already. So we've got this belt, this is the same belt coming up here, all of the contaminated scrap just gets loaded into these chests that I set up ages ago for um, probably for uh, science number, uh, material science one and it just gets passed in here and taken away by the train and I've not actually I've not really needed to expand this. The only expansion I've done has been at the other end, putting in some more trains, putting in some more recycling plants and so on. But basically, the, infrastructure, the existing infrastructure has just worked. 
And the same with the coolants as well. I've got this big array of cooling facilities up here, and that's got we're full on the super cool, we're full on cold, and there's the appropriate the, the specified amount of um, of cool, and then this stuff we just is just an overflow. So this all just works, even though this one hasn't got any power. Uh, there should be a pile on there apparently. So we'll put that in, maybe someday I'll fix that. But it's all it's all just working. We've got all of the resources we need in, in in these pipes here. And we've got all of the a lot of the inputs that are coming in. We've got this facility up here making the material science packs, and this half belt of them we're passing through here is is sufficient. It's all been built up for the earlier science packs and it just keeps working, which is really very nice and sort of make, um, it makes me glad I set it up in such a robust way in the first place. Next one up is particle beam shielding. So that's a little bit more complicated because I need to get part the particle beams and I needed to make the space platform plating. And I think that took yes. Yeah, so here we could go down here. We're bringing in, we're bringing in stone here. We're turning it into bricks. We're turning those into into uh, stone tablets. We're turning that into heat shield tiles along with this with this sulfur and iridium. We're turning that into space station scaffolds with steel and low density structures, and then eventually we're turning that into these flooring things. What are they called? Um, platform platings that we can then bombard up here. So this was, I take I take back some of what I said about it being absolutely trivial. There were a lot of steps to go through here, lots of extra things I needed to bring in, um, which did add to the complexities of it a little bit. So it, but I mean, it's not. Again, it's not difficult as such. It's just a long series of, of machines and you just go and you plug all of them in in turn then you come back and you make sure that they're all producing quickly enough to keep keep the machine at the top running and that's basically it it's it's not difficult it's just uh, just a little bit time consuming um, and so these these machines are producing the um, the data cards which are then being poured down this belt here and as you can see we've got a bit of a backlog of the green and the red here um, I dropped this pipe in a little bit earlier to mark the point where the, the green ones are up to and I think they are actually being produced by the systems up here at exactly the same rate as they're being used down below. So this is getting neither longer nor shorter. But I've put that in as a, as a marker so I can come back and easily check on it later. Oh, and of course I needed the, uh, the purple clouds for that as well. So we've got here we've got we're feeding in material packs, sand and plasma stream. And the sand comes from the same supply of stone here. I'm crushing it into sand and then feeding it in here. And we also need the plasma which we're making down here from more yet yeah, more stone and again we've got this nicely balanced so we're producing the right amount of it and as you can see this this system here is this one's full this is full and every so often these run just to make like that just to make sure we've got enough of it coming through and we have this is this is working i should probably stick some um efficiency modules in these actually because they're very hungry machines so there we go that's taken that down to that's a bit of an over a bit overkill given these not will knock 100 percent off each anyway so that's taken that down from um down to using a mere 20 megawatts, which is a, a massive improvement over the presumably 100 megawatts it was using before. I don't, I clearly don't actually really need that because I've got a load of the red solar panels, 60 of them in fact, up, up top, producing potentially 224 megawatts, which is a lot, especially given that I'm only using 70 at the moment. However, if I take that um, efficiency module back out of there, you can see that boop, that suddenly leaps back up again and we're suddenly using a significant amount of power. So that shows you just how much power these particle accelerators use. So let's, um, yeah, we will leave that in there because it makes it makes enough of a difference to be, to be absolutely worth it. And we're feeding all of those down here to the supercomputers. And with this being a tier four science, I need to have eight supercomputers in here to produce at the, at what I seem to have decided is my standard rate of wanting to be able to produce these things at. And if you look at these, you can see that the lights on are in all of them. They're all they're all running quite happily, merrily away here, producing the science. Um, so the fact that this belt is basically empty just means that I am again once again producing the the top science pack, uh, top data card, sorry, that comes along here at exactly the same rate that it's being used by all of these machines. So it's neither running out nor backing up. So at the moment, that's absolutely fine. I may decide at some point I want to increase the uh, the rate this runs at if I decide to discover I'm using a lot of these science packs and don't have enough coming through. But for now, this is this is absolutely fine. They're all they're all running away merrily, and every so often you'll see them chuck out a, a catalog like that. And that's as you can see is a tier four catalog, um, and that feels like quite an achievement. It's my first tier four catalog to be um, being made there. Then we come down here. We've got more more sciences to do. So we've got electrical shielding data here. This is similar to before. We've got uh, we're making an ion stream, which is uh, lovely for using for fuel for spaceships, and turns out can also be used for science as well. Um, that's being made here from a, from again we've got the flow of these um, what's this plasma stream coming down from here. We're using that for both of these machines. This one also needs a um, 
uh, an efficiency module in there to just, and that'll bring the amount of power usage power I'm using down even further, I assume. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's just not running at the moment because it's not it's not needed. We're um, again, it produces it far quicker than we use it up. So these are producing the uh, shielding data, and same way everything else does. And again, we've got the same sort of general ideas going on down here. We've got um, an iridium pass through here that's returning it back up here. And um, because it's on the bottom side of the belt, I've done this, and coming out on the bottom here, I've done this slightly differently. I've got, but I've got, but again, it will be used up from this belt by preference. And then any, any and if there's a shortage, more will be fed in along this underground belt here, of where it's worth, as you can see, they're merging there. We've also got here. We've got disposals of both types of scrap, so contaminated and clean. And those just go over here onto the two belts that run up there, back up to the train, as I showed you before. So that one's fairly straightforward. Now this one is the one that just takes in all of the different types of, um, of metal, melts them all together into an, into an experimental alloy and gives you data on it. So that, as you can see here, we've got iron and, co iron and copper on this belt here. Then we've got um, holmium and beryllium coming in on this one. And we've got iridium and the data cards coming in at the top. And that meant, because I'm shipping this, the, um, the metals around as ingots rather than plates, because that's far more efficient, uh, we've got another couple of machines down here just to turn them into plates. And, and to be honest, those two machines are more than fast enough. I could have a lot more um, data being produced down here, but I don't need to because it's producing it fast enough for, time, for, my, uh, for my current purposes. So that's that's all of the um, the inputs, all the data card inputs, as you can see, they're then flowing up this belt and going into the, in to be made into science. So that works nicely. That's that's just just works fine. So if we, however, if we now look at the science pack itself, you'll notice. So as I've said before, all of the science packs will take in um, the appropriate um, catalog for that tier. They will take in the appropriate insight for that genre that type of science so in this case all of the material science is taking material insights but only this one takes in material science catalog four and then absolutely all of the space science packs take in significant data and that's that's used for all of them so we, th there's those three they will also take in the previous tier of science back in quite large numbers actually six is a lot of those to be pulling in um oh although it does produce eight of the eight of the science packs on the output so actually that seems fairly reasonable but then every single one has its own special extra thing, and these tend to be working up the tiers of complexity for their for the for the metal that works with that um, with that science genre again science type. So in this case, for material, it's iridium. So for the first level, let's have a look at this. First level up here, you can see we're taking in. Uh, let's close that for now. We've got iridium plates being fed in. So here, this is what I was saying. We've got the tier one. Um, catalogs, we've got the Iridium plate, so those are the specifically tier 1 things. You've got the material insights that go into all of the material packs. You've got the, um, the significant data that goes into all of the science, space science packs, all four types. Um, so this one, first tier, which takes in Iridium plates. Second tier over here, we're taking these Iridium girders, which are made by processing Iridium plates down here in this machine, which makes, so it makes them, it takes, it, it's an extra step, step of processing, so it's something slightly more complicated, but still in the general Iridium trend. Tier 3, we take in these um, iridium bearings, these heavy bearings, which clearly need to be made a bit faster than I am at the moment, so that's um, something to look into. But they're being taken in, and they're, um, and, they're and, and that's so that's the next step up, because down here we require, not only do you require iridium, but you also require lubricant to make those. So they're a little bit more complicated, so they're a step up. In some cases, for example, for the astro science down here, you can see we're making the rods for the second tier, um, and then for the third tier, we need to make these frames, but they require the rods. So again, there's the extra complication because you have to pass the stuff through like that. Now, the, the fourth ones, the heavy composites are a bit more complicated. Not only do they, requ they require iridium plate and heavy girder, so that's, that's fair enough. It's pulling in the things we're already making up here. But they also take heat shielding. So I had a couple of choices here. I could either decide to bring in heat shielding to up here... I had three choices, in fact. I thought of a third one. This is like the Spanish Inquisition. I could either bring in the heat shielding tiles ready, build them into the um, in, into the composites here on site. I could bring in all of the ingredients for the heat shield tiles and build the heat shield tiles, then the composites, then feed them in. Or alternatively, and this is the one I went for, I could just bring in the heavy composites pre-made some, from somewhere else and drag them in, on, bring them in on a separate train, uh, which is what I've done here, as you can see. And this is very similar to what I did with the biological sciences as well. Biological ones are even more complicated. You had so instead of it being just the um, uh, vitamelange roast that we've got here, and then pro and then sort of little steps on each one, we had up here. Let's let's have a look at these. So 
you need vitamin orange extract, which is made from, sorry, spice, not roast. Uh, so you need a chemical plant to make that, so that's a, or, or a biochem facility. So that's a bit bigger and more complicated. Then for the tier two, you need bio scrubbers, which are vitalic acid and glass and steel plate, which is glass and extra. So, so you see, these are far more complicated. Um, and then you get on to the tier three, which is probably going to be even worse, where you need the reagent, which is which requires vulcanite as well, as well as the vitamin orange extract. So all of these things, having trying to cram all of these things up here, just wouldn't have fitted with the design I was going for at the time. And presumably tier four is even worse. You require vitalic epoxy, which is lots of things we've already used, and sulfur as well. And you require these vitamin orange core fragments. So this is going to be quite a bit more complicated. I'm going to need to rethink my design a bit here. But in order to get round it, I built all of these things elsewhere in the factory, and I'm just shipping them in by train. Which, is, which just keeps this system over here neat, compact, and tidy, and similar to all of the other ones that are running around near, nearby. So, that brings me <laughs> to all of this stuff down here, where we've got... Um, this is the facility for making these um, heavy composites. So down here we've got, once again, we've got stone coming in, being made into bricks, being made into stone slabs, being made into heat shield tiles. And in hindsight, actually, now that I've just gone run through some earlier um, parts of the science up here, it, it's just occurred to me that I could have pulled them off from here and brought them down. Um, <laughs> but I didn't, and just added on to here, and that would have been much neater and simpler. But I didn't, I'd, I'd forgotten that that was there at the time, basically. So I'm building, and I need a lot of heat shield tiles for this um, heavy composite, as you can see. I've got like 12 machines along here. 13 machines apparently, nice and lucky. Um, so they're produce we're producing again, once again we're producing stone bricks from from stone to, to, to be turned into slab uh, into into uh, tablets to be turned into heat shield tiles with the other inputs, and then to be put in here and turned into the heavy composites along with the the girders and the iridium that are being made further up the um, up the system. So those are then all being shipped off into a train system over here where they can then be carried off towards to the um, uh, to the what do you call it the, the the area where the actual science is being done. So that is the main part. That's the, sort of the, the extension I've made on my um, on my material science production facility since the uh, since the last episode, and I'm I'm quite happy. I have to say I'm quite pleased with the way I've designed all of this, with my sort of backbone up the middle, and then all the various different systems going up either side of it. Let's turn off the station names just because it makes it look a bit neater. So we've got we've got the sort of the landing area over here where all the, everything is brought in, and then we've got recycling and some of the sundries that we've been building energy, astro, material, bio, uh, space, uh, rocket, rocket science I think it one's called, and the actual science itself and then expansions for the future over here. And this is so easy to expand out this way as far as I need to and I can just put these things off either side. And then each one of these can basically expand as far as it needs to as well. So material has got longer and longer and longer until it's got all the way down to here. I suspect biological is going to be even bigger because it's almost as long as material already and I've only done the first three tiers of it. But there's all this room to expand downwards. The Literally the only limiting factor on how big I can make these things is whether these will eventually run into the railway for the next thing. And any of these that have got a bit long, so we've got, yes, this one, that one, this one, and that one. But they, when they do get a bit long, I can just loop them back on themselves as I have here because the chances of all of it getting that big is fairly small. So as you can see, I've got my these plasma generators coming across here and then it just loops back on itself to, to come across here as well. And that way I can, I've got the extra throughput. And this isn't entirely necessary at the moment anyway. It was only there to, when I was, because I was, I was starting to use a lot of the ion stream for fueling up spaceships. And that seems, we seem to have got to the point where everything is, is full. So this is probably massively overbuilt for what I need these days. But there is that room to, 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 sort of to wrap it around like that. And if I ever did find that I wanted to make twice as much material science, for example, I could theoretically just take a copy of this entire system here and put it in over here. Or I could go down through the entire system putting in speed modules and beacons and that sort of thing. So there are there are many ways to sort of to increase the amount of effectiveness of your of your systems without actually encroaching on the next one across. So I think the this size was set fairly arbitrarily when I was putting in the first the first one or the third and fourth ones I suppose wherever it was that I did was making the decision um, I did set the width fairly arbitrarily but I think it's, it's worked out well and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it um, everything has just fitted in quite nicely and it's all it's all working well so I was talking about actually making the science so yes up here as, as, as we were discussing we've got the um, the system systems here we're making tier one tier two three tier three tier four and that just gets 
uh, that just trundles through merrily, making all of the all the science packs we need. There is, as I was saying, an obvious shortage of um, heavy bearings up here, which I'm going to need to come in and fix. But over here, we've now got those heavy composites I mentioned, and we're feeding in all the different bits and pieces we need, and that is just working. As we make the tier 4 science packs, they're getting chucked onto this belt here, as you can see. They trundle down here. The used memory cards are disposed of here, so this at this point they go up and up and then drop down this chute to be uh, recycled and, and re reformatted and recycled. And the actual uh, science packs themselves, the tier threes and tier fours, hopefully if we're making any of the, if we're making both of those, will then drop down this belt all the way along here. Yes, there's some fours and there's some threes following them along. They travel all the way along here <laughs> through this sort of bit of spaghetti here. And as you can see, we've got the tier fours, and actually tier threes are the ones that we're shortest of at the moment. But that's because I'm doing this artillery shell range um, research up here that uses rather a lot of the tier three um, tier three packs. We're using 12,000 of them, and we're not—I say we're using 12,000 of them. That's not actually true because I've got these machines here full of um, full of productivity modules. So that's that's improving the it by uh, where is it plus 100 percent essentially. So I'm getting twice as much research out of each each productivity module that goes through. And we're also running 87 times the speed of a normal science lab, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, but it it seems to be working. It's almost keeping up. We're not quite keeping this as full as it needs to be. So there's a slight shortage of the, of the um, science packs coming through on the sushi, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm not in any great hurry. This is probably good enough, to be honest. What I actually should have is I should have another belt coming off here to feed the second lab and run it from there. So my plan with this, <laughs> this, is, this has gone a little bit unnecessary as we've got a bit further into the game, was to have this sushi belt feeding, as you can see, obviously all of these labs, but with these really high level productivity modules and more to the point with this ridiculous boost of speed I've got from this wide area beacon over here, with these machines running at 87 times then um, and the speed of a normal machine, which is um, 80 times the speed that one of these machines would normally run at, because they normally run at 10 times. Um, the limiting factor is just actually the rate that some of these science packs are coming through at, which is a bit crazy. Uh, possibly I should have, <clears throat> have have a second belt coming through with the um, with a different science pack on. I don't I don't know, but I think the short term fix is going to be to have a second one of these belts running around. Um, I was getting destroyed. No, ooh. Oh, no, Salia. Oh dear. Okay, I'll need to look into that. Um, is having yeah. So have, is, is going to be to have a second belt come up to do this one, and then have them have it run all the way around, and then merge in here somewhere. And I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll find a way to I'll find a way to squeeze that in, possibly by bringing it round onto this belt here. So yes, that is um, that is science for you. There's um, a lot going on over here. Um, I've now got, I've, I say, I've got the tier four of space science, of, of material science going, and that, I'm, I'm, sa I'm very satisfied with that because it's the first of my tier four space sciences. So there's, that takes me, brings me a bit. It feels like a big jump forward in terms of, of what's going on, and I feel like, feel like things are going really well there. Uh, next up, well, there's, um, I've got some plans for expanding my, um, uh, no, all this. I've got some plans for expanding out the. Um, or process the core the core mining facility so down wherever it is I can never find it. here we go here to get the core core chunks flowing in a bit more quickly along here and get the trains running through a bit faster I'll show you a bit more of that in the next episode though and then after that the plan is going to be to go off to some of the um, more uh, some of the other um, uh, uh, some of my other uh, deep space sp space stations and start launching probes from um, from Norvis orbit and from an asteroid belt in order to get the tier 4 astro science and energy sciences up and running. Once those are done I'll then sort of go in and I suppose beat my head against the uh, biological science a bit because I have a feeling that one's going to be harder. But we shall see how that goes once I get there. For now I think things are going um, yeah, things are just going pretty well. I'm generally happy with all with the, with the progress I've been making, and um, I look forward to showing off some more of it next time. So, um, a bit of advertising for the channel now. Don't forget to come along to uh, streams every streams I uh, stream Factorio Space Exploration every Tuesday on uh, both on uh, YouTube and Twitch. So please do come along to those. And if you subscribe to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> um, you'll get notified about it as well. So that helps helps you out because you'll know when I'm streaming or when I release a video, all of that stuff. Helps me out because it bumps my channel up in the um, 
in, in the rankings and whatnot. Um, I hit 400 subscribers a couple of days ago, which is rather satisfying. So um, I want to roll roll on, keep that going, keep it going, and I want to get up to um, about I want to get up to the, the, the a big round thousand, and then uh, see where it goes from there. Um, and of course, there's a, there's a Factorio Industrial Revolution on Thursday, so do come along to those that as well. And play, that's the one I'm playing with some friends. Completely different mod pack, and. I think things are going pretty well there. We're uh, we're making steady progress. We've we've gone into sort of the the village system at the moment, which is like I've done down here on Norvis. It's where you have your little your separate facilities like this one over here, where I'm making green circuits, um, or these ones over here where I'm making red circuits and blue circuits and down here I'm making concrete and here I'm making low density structures and splitting off all of those things into their own separate little villages makes it. A lot easier to expand them, and a lot and a lot easier just to make sure you've got all the right sort of production quantities going on in the in the right sort of places. And you and it stops you trying to cram more and more and more stuff down your main bus. Which by the by the time you get to that point and realise you should be expanding these things out, um, your your main bus is probably going to be very very have, over overstressed, should we say? Now, as you can see, mine is now relatively calm because most of the um, production has been taken off it so yes we've got the iron flowing fairly quickly here we've got the sulfur flowing through a bit here um, grey science appears to be in, in a bit of a shortage that's because I'm doing a, a, a military science up here that's why um, glass is flowing quite quickly actually but it's not actually maxed out you can see the uh, the bottom one there isn't, isn't moving completely 100% of the time so yeah moving things off the bus makes it a lot more efficient and, and means your, your bus is, is, is significantly less stressed <clears throat> and therefore you don't have to make an absolutely enormous mega wide one so that's going well we're, we're pretty pulling things off making them making them in different places we've got we've got a, a, i'm trying to remember we might have got yellow science running i can't can't actually remember but uh, yeah, you'll have to come along to the streams and find out we've also got the uh, gta videos that's the uh, manhunt and uh, manhunt checkpoint landmark and so on all of these sort of the ones where where the things are sort of where where we've got um, our own modded gameplay in the GTA world, where we've got my friends chasing me around trying to kill me before I can take all the checkpoints around the city. That's good fun. I do recommend coming along to those. Um, and there'll probably be some other things. I've got a few videos recorded that I haven't had time to edit yet. But uh, yeah, the, the schedule has has room for a bit more in as in it as well. So as ever, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I do have noticed that only about a third of people who watch my videos are, are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you're in the other two thirds, please do please do subscribe. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>